2022 was another eventful year, geopolitically, in the corporate world, for controversial celebrities, and in science. But it wasn't just vaccines intended for humans making the headlines. The world's first honeybee vaccine was approved in the United States. It was created to prevent American fowl brood, a highly contagious bacterial disease that targets bee larvae and is known to wipe out entire colonies. The vaccine, which contains a dead version of the bacteria, is incorporated into the royal jelly, which the worker bees feed to the queen. This causes the vaccine to be deposited into her ovaries, giving the developing larvae immunity. Disease and parasites are no doubt a threat to bee colonies, but contrary to popular belief, honey bee colonies are actually on the rise, and have been for the past decade or so. European honeybees were domesticated by humans likely thousands of years ago, with evidence of beekeeping dating back to ancient civilizations such as those in Egypt and Greece. Whilst European honeybee numbers are on the rise, wild bees, which are effectively any species of bee that is not the European honeybee, have been in decline, for which habitat loss is largely responsible. Although, there have been a number of research papers published suggesting the increase in managed beehives have been detrimental to the wild bee populations. Domesticated colonies are more prone to disease due to them often being highly concentrated, which are then passed on to wild bees, meaning that by preventing diseases from spreading within the managed populations, it may also minimise them being transmitted to the wild populations, who are thought to still be responsible for the vast majority of pollination activity. But 2022 also saw a dangerous predator to both domesticated and wild pollinators alike swarm across the English Channel towards mainland Britain. Over the summer, there were an unprecedented number of sightings of European praying mantises on English Channel Islands, who were believed to be migrating further north from France due to climate change. Praying mantises are often touted to be good pest control, given they don't harm plants and they prey upon pests such as caterpillars and grasshoppers. However, they don't discriminate between those that damage plants and those that help with pollination. And they'll also eat other helpful insects, such as ladybugs, who prey upon a variety of tiny insects known for wreaking havoc on both indoor and outdoor plants. One ladybug can eat thousands of aphids in their lifetime, making them a more universally friendly option for pest control. A more notorious predator has made an astounding comeback in the past decade or so. In July 22, Nepal announced their wild tiger populations had more than doubled since 2010. They conducted an expansive survey covering more than 18,000 square kilometres across protected areas and wildlife corridors in the Terai Arc landscape. They carried out this monumental task using camera traps, which took thousands of images to inform the survey. The estimates from which suggest there are now 355 individuals inhabiting the area up from 121 in 2009. Tiger populations are notoriously hard to estimate, not only because they're elusive creatures, but because of the dense habitats they occupy. Take the Sundarbans for example, a vast mangrove forest shared between India and Bangladesh, which is thought to have the second highest density of tigers per unit area in the world. Their numbers are also rising, with official counts going from 76 in 2014 to 136 in 2022, but their actual numbers are hard to judge, with some estimates suggesting there could be upwards of 400 tigers inhabiting the area. Regardless of the actual figures, these are positive signs for Bengal tigers, whose numbers had long been in decline. But as their populations grow, so too does the risk of human-tiger conflict. Tigers are one of the few species known to actively hunt humans, with more than 40 people being killed by tigers since 2019 in the Sundarbans alone. Their increasing numbers mean villages in and around the protected areas are more at risk and will likely need to be moved to safer locations. And in order for wild tiger populations to increase further, many of the protected areas will need to expand given they are now close to full capacity. Not only are Bengal tigers now more numerous, but they also might be getting bigger. Siberian tigers have historically weighed much more than them, but in recent years the average size of each species has been getting closer. Although some populations of Bengal tigers do seem to be gaining size, the main factor in this appears to be that their Siberian cousins are shrinking. Kazaranga National Park is home to some of the biggest Bengal tigers, which is located northeast of the Sundarbans and west of the Terai Arc landscape, within the Indian state of Assam, an area which achieved an unprecedented milestone in 2022. Wildlife conservation efforts in the region saw their Indian rhino populations go unscathed by poachers throughout the year. 
The Rhinoceros unicornis, named for its lone horn, is listed as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List, but their populations have been increasing in recent years. There are around 3,700 living in the wild today, the majority of which are located in Assam's Kazaranga National Park. This success story is in no small part thanks to the Special Rhino Protection Force implemented by Assam's government in 2019. It was just a year before that, in 2018, that the last known male northern white rhino, called Sudan, died in Kenya. And with the only two females remaining unable to carry a pregnancy, it seemed any possibility of the subspecies coming back from the brink of extinction had been lost. But with modern science, there is still hope. Fortunately, scientists had long been collecting semen and eggs from the last living members of the rhino species, from which they've been able to produce numerous embryos, which have been preserved in liquid nitrogen and are expected to be transferred to a surrogate southern white rhino mother in the near future. Should it be successful, it would be the first species to be brought back from extinction. Well, not exactly. The Pyrenean ibex went extinct in 2000, but a few years later, scientists were able to use frozen cells to clone a calf. While the clone survived birth, it died shortly after due to lung defects, making them the only species to have gone extinct twice. But who knows what technology will make possible in the coming years. It could even prevent another mass extinction event, like the one that saw off the dinosaurs, which has never been more possible than it is today. In September 22, NASA's Double Asteroid Redirection Test, or DART, successfully altered an asteroid's orbit. This was the first full-scale demonstration of asteroid deflection technology. DART's target was a near-Earth asteroid system called Didymos, composed of the roughly 780 metre diameter Didymos, and the smaller, approximately 160 metre diameter Dimorphos, which orbits Didymos. DART impacted Dimorphos on the 26th of September, and changed its orbit in the process. The measure of success for the mission was how much it altered Dimorphos's orbit. Prior to DART's impact, it took Dimorphos 11 hours and 55 minutes to orbit its larger parent asteroid, Didymos, and the investigation team has since confirmed the spacecraft's impact altered Dimorphos's orbit by approximately 32 minutes. NASA had previously defined a minimum successful orbit period change to be 73 seconds or more, meaning DART surpassed the minimum benchmark by more than 25 times. This particular video of the impact was recorded by an especially high-end piece of kit, which only became operational earlier in 22, and is known as the James Webb Telescope. It was launched on the 25th of December 21, and has been billed as the successor to the Hubble Telescope. Its primary mirror is 6.5 metres, whilst the Hubble Telescope's is just 2.4, giving it six times the light collecting area. Another big difference is that it specialises in detecting infrared light, whilst the Hubble uses visible light. With it costing around $10 billion, it will go down as the most expensive and complicated space observatory ever built. So what do you get for $10 billion's worth of kit? Well, as you can see here, Webb does a better job at defining stars and galaxies, but also its ability to observe infrared light is a pretty big deal. In this image, for example, within the neck of the hourglass-like shape are the very beginnings of a new star, known as a protostar. The clouds of dust and gas within this area are only visible in infrared light, so it would not be visible if observed by the Hubble telescope. Whilst this side-by-side -side comparison is of two merging spiral galaxies which are forming a bean-like shape, with the more distorted galaxy above and to the left of the other. The image taken by the James Webb telescope shows much clearer spirals in the star-forming regions, which may help us gain a clearer understanding of how stars are formed. But perhaps the clearest example of the superiority of the James Webb Telescope is the images it took of the iconic Pillars of Creation. Hubble first captured the Pillars of Creation in 1995, before revisiting it in 2014. But the images taken by Webb in 2022 really display how infrared pierces through the dust, revealing countless stars previously not seen. The Webb Telescope can also capture images using its mid-infrared instrument, which specialises in detailing dust and gas. These cutting-edge features open up new possibilities for what can be observed in outer space, so it will no doubt be fascinating to see what the James Webb Telescope discovers in the years to come.